Hello, today we're talking about the MIDI logical editor. There is a project logical editor as well, but that's not the subject of this video today. And the MIDI uh, logical editor is accessible here. Now, just as a heads up, if you have an empty part, and that's the currently selected um, MIDI event, you can't actually click on the logical editor, but you can still open it from the keyboard shortcut. Goodness knows why. Weird little quirk. Anyway, let's move on. So here we have this MIDI event and I'm going to open the logical editor. So I've got a keyboard shortcut set to open this because I use it a lot. And these down here are mine. So I'm going to go through each of these and we'll, in a roundabout way, approach the logical editor from a kind of a practical perspective. These two at the at the top, these are my own hand-built ones, are kind of almost identical. We'll delete we'll deal with delete tiny notes first because it's the one that I use more often. This happens when you're recording stuff and you get really fractional notes, any number of reasons why you might have like accidentally hit a key when you were playing a solo and that tiny note you don't want. So that note there is 26. Uh, ticks in length. So we have this concept of uh, pulses per quarter note. Let's not get caught up in the technology in the, the terminology, but basically if you have like one pulse per quarter note, it's the smallest amount of time that you've got currently configured to, to, to mean anything in any significant context. And I'm being deliberately vague because you can actually set the the number of ticks per quarter note let's not go there if i want to delete all the really really small notes in this event over here i can choose a note that's representative of the smallest kind of thing i want to survive and i can see that that's 37 ticks and so i can now set this to let's say 30. so what we're saying here is that every note type is equal to note and length is less than or equal to 30 ticks and we're dealing in pulses per quarter note that's what defines this as a tick we're going to delete those events now as things stand at the moment if i click apply nothing happens because the only note that's currently selected is 37 ticks long but if i select the entire event and we look at maybe that note down there that's really really tiny click apply yeah it's gone and several others as well so you set your resolution as to what you want if i make that 80 now and then click apply more notes are going to disappear there we go we're thinning it out so we'll see um, even in this video other instances of where you might want to do that thinning process so delete tiny notes is great. And my starting position when I open this preset for the first time is a tenth of a quarter note, which is really small. A similar um, option is delete notes of zero length or less. So it's exactly the same operation. Length is less than or equal to, but this time zero. This is, a, this is basically like um, bug protection. I have come across notes in Cubase of less than zero length. It seems to be something to do with cycling. There is a bug in there somewhere. I've never quite narrowed it down, but occasionally you will end up with notes that are less than zero and they're just like annoying. They get in the way. They don't render properly in any of the edits. You can't even see them properly in like the list editor, I don't think. But so that's that's bug protection, that one there not the normal course of events and for the most part you know Cubase is pretty well behaved it's a pretty stable program but when it goes wrong I have these little safety nets this is a good one select every well it's select every third note but it's select every nth note so let's have a look at the um the, and this is used for thinning again if we have if I draw a long note and then cut it up so just hold, hold alt down and then click with my scissors and it chops it up into lots of little chunks 
So now if I want to thin this data, I can have a look at the note, which is uh, C sharp three. So if the type is equal to note and uh, this is a bit weird. Type is last event, condition every other event, event counter three. That's basically saying we're, we're dealing with like the end of a chain. The chain is dealing with a certain number of events going backwards. The number of links in the chain is three and all of that resolves in a roundabout way to count every third note. And the pitch is equal to C sharp three then we will select those notes. So if I now click apply, it's now selected the notes that I've asked it to. Why would I want to do that? Well, I might want to delete them if I want to thin it. I might want to move them to a different note. And now if I've created like a drum line and they're all hats, I can now move every third hat sound up to a, like an open hat or a ride or whatever I want it to be. So again, a really useful kind of generic setting that I very, very rarely use completely out of the box. It's, it's super rare that I'm going to want to select exactly every other event, every third event that's exactly C sharp three. These are starting points templates for me. Now on that note, I get these ideas out of the presets that Steinberg give you. I cannot recommend highly enough going through every one of these logical editor settings, finding out what it does and finding out how it does it because it, it's actually inspirational. It sparks ideas where you think, wow, I'd never even considered using the logical editor for that reason. Select note at pitch. Oh, I can't tell you how much I use this one. So pitch is equal to, again, D sharp minus two is just a placeholder and velocity is less than or equal to 60, another placeholder, then select. So what are we saying here? We've got this, all of this stuff over here. Let's say we want to delete all the quiet instances of this note. There's not that many of them. Let's stick a few more here. Okay, that's fun. So let's say we want to delete all the quiet ones. So we pick the point at which we don't want those notes to appear. And let's say it's this, a velocity of 41 or lower. And we're talking about C3 here. So where the pitch is equal to C3 and velocity is less than or equal to 40. Now I can click apply now and it'll do the job. There you go. And it's selected all of those really quiet notes. I could change this to delete and just zap them straight away, but I might want to move them somewhere else. And so if I pick all the blue notes, say anything of like 40 or less, and then select, and here we're dealing with D sharp three. So I now grab those notes and I can take them somewhere else. But it's all tied to a single pitch. I'm usually dealing with a single note and I want to do something with the notes at that pitch. Set minimum length. Say, so, well, I don't want any note in my event to be less than um, one quarter note. So. Here, I'm driving by event is selected. So first of all, let's select all the notes. So where the length is less than one quarter note, set to a fixed value of one quarter note. So now everything in this event that's less than a quarter note gets set. Set single note pitch. If I want to move everything from one place to another, it's possible to maybe select one and then select all notes on the same octave. And now I can you know, do whatever I want with them. 
but sometimes I'm, I'm making lots of changes and I'll actually write down all this to go here, and this to go here and this to go here and I'll have a list of maybe 10 operations that I'm going to perform. Trying to do that manually and sending that one over there and then you know this one down here and that one, it all gets very confusing. So I'll do it with the logical editor. I'll say if the pitch is equal to, what's this down here at the moment? Uh, D sharp 2. D sharp 2. Then set to a fixed value of, let's send them up here to um, A sharp 2. Now, even though I hit enter then, that doesn't execute the command. You need to click apply. So this is a transform. We've got deletes and selects and copies and all sorts. Transform is basically execute. So we apply. And now all of those notes have jumped up to A sharp too. And these are the two that I use more than any other set velocity ceiling and set velocity floor. Say I want to rationalize these notes over here. So I don't want the, uh, the, loud, the loudest ones to be quite this loud. Let's say I want the maximum velocity to be 80. So first of all, I'll select all the notes at that pitch. And now I'm dealing with the selected events. So then I say any event where the velocity is bigger than 80, set to a fixed value of 80, bring the ceiling down. This is a transform operation. Click apply. And now you saw just the selected notes were edited and we can see all the new black bars at 80. Then we do the opposite. Let's say these notes are too quiet and I want the lowest velocity to be 40. So once again, select all the notes on that pitch. Anything that has a velocity less than 40 set to a fixed value of, and there now we've got quiet notes aren't quite so quiet, the loud notes aren't quite so loud, we've brought everything down into the range. The logical editor is really cool and will save you a lot of time if you find out how to use it best. It is really easy to lose yourself in there. Anyway, thanks very much for watching this one and uh, I'll see you next time.